focus on a realization of how the world has changed um, and also the realization which is healthy is that you cannot expect um, things to be constant in, in the film world so let's say you know i've built up a reputation of sorts um i am more or less respected um, and i've built a lot of contacts in the so-called indie you know uh, world uh, in america where um, I felt I was able to make the, the phone calls, you know, direct phone calls to people who I knew personally, just rather than, you know, dear sir, to, or to whom it may concern. So, you know, I did that. And um, I remember sending to Sony Classics, who I think had distributed Miss Julie and, and, you know, and Tom Barnard and Dylan, the guy who worked with him, and, you know, I would sort of regard as friends. I use that very loosely in the film world. You know, so I sent them the script, and then I got a message back saying they'd love to have a conference call, and I was making a documentary in Belgium. And I remember driving in this truck um, somewhere near Antwerp, and then on my mobile phone, you know, having this conference call with them, and they were saying all nice things, like, oh, wow, this is a Mike Figures film. And this was going on, but nothing else was being said. So I eventually I said, so, you know, do you feel that you would like to come in on, um, you know, the, uh, the production? And they went, um, well, we'd love to see it when you shot it. You know, that, which is what it really said. And I said, oh, so you, you don't want to come in, right? Just so I'm clear. And, they, and the guy said, and I actually then wrote a scene, which is actually I've taken out of the film, but it's on Vimeo, called The Three Wise Monkeys, where the main character meets the three guys. And they talk about his script. And, and it's a direct quote from his conversation where the guy said, Mike, um, Pauline Kale is dead. And with her, her audience. You know, <laughs> this is a Pauline Kale movie. You know, Pauline Kale, very famous, and, you know, Diane of all film critics. I thought, well, that's the saddest thing I've ever heard. You know? um, and it was pretty general. You know, that's what, that's what everybody said. And they sort of said, well, who's in your cast? And I'd sort of say, uh, Sebastian Cobb. And they thought, I said, you know, he's in the lives of others. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a great movie. Uh, <laughs> you know, anybody else? And uh, you know, there wasn't anybody else for them. And, uh, and I appreciate the predicament everybody's in. But also, I'm dismayed by the lack of courage that they, that, that they all exhibit, you know, because they're all actually wearing nice suits and they live in nice houses and obviously still making money. Um, so that was the American market, that was a zero. And then uh, the BFI, zero. Um, and then, you know, all my pals, you know, Jeremy Thomas, who, you know, uh, makes all the Bertolucci films, you know, he didn't even read it, his company. His company read it in the past, you know, Channel 4, et cetera, et cetera. So you get very quickly to the end of the list. Uh, and then you have to make a decision. Now, the film cost, I think, um, probably something like 11, 1.1 million dollars, right? Which is, what, like 700,000 pounds or something. And you see that list at the end of the crew, you know, which is clearly where the money went. Um, I, at a certain point of, you know, like, abandon it or do something radical, I was all for doing something, something more radical, which is to cut the budget maybe to 400. Um, you know, people are making films for far less than that now, 100,000, 50,000. Um, there are certain things I needed which I think did cost money. Um, and to cut the crew radically down, because I firmly believe that you can make a film probably with 10 people, you know, if they're smart and energetic and they know what they're doing, and now with the new equipment, that is possible. Um, for various reasons, we didn't do that, and we, um, uh, well, actually what happened was we, my producer and, and, and I both dug into our pockets and we financed it ourselves, so I used my, um, my director's skill pension fund, they, you know, accrue all of your money for every film, and at a certain point, you know, you know, when you retire, you can either take a pension or a lump sum, and you can take a lump sum out early, so I did, I took it out. And that was anyway the only way to make the film, even to the point of like asking the BFI for I think sixteen thousand pounds for post production for sound, and they said no, having forced you to fill in a mammoth questionnaire first, you know the most insane questions. So uh, you know my main point to any young filmmaking group would be, 
you really need to start thinking about distribution in a radically alternative way. Um, because reliance on that system is going to get you nowhere. It just is going to make you unhappy. You know, um, it's almost like it's time to reclaim film. Um, filmmakers need to reclaim film for themselves, and that it, by doing so, it will become more attractive to a public also. Because inevitably, the talent is there. Great films will be made. I, I really believe that. Okay.